Section 8.1, example 5. So according to a Pew Research poll, this is just a company that does polling, 34% um, of adults report that they are happy. Um, so that makes me think that's actually the population. So that's like a claim for the population. They're kind of implying that's all Americans. Um, and so we're going to check out a sample and kind of investigate if this number is true. So a re recent sample of 391 regular churchgoers revealed that 168 of them were happy. So that means N is 391, that's my total, and X is 168. So let's comment on the requirements, and then we can go ahead and do a confidence interval in a second. So the requirements are that NP and NQ, but we only have sample values, so we'll use P hat and Q hat, are at least 10. So we learned last time we could do n times p hat, or the shortcut is n times p is actually the same as x. So x is the number of people who are happy, so 168. And then nq is just who's left over. So it's n minus x because everyone else is not happy. So that would be the 391 minus 168. So it's basically like who's happy, who's not happy. So 391 minus 168 is 223. All we care about is that both of these numbers are at least 10, so the requirements are met. We're allowed to use the normal distribution. Um, if we can't use the d normal distribution in real life, we would collect more data. In stats class, we might just do it anyway to get practice, um, but you really shouldn't do it if the requirements aren't met. So let's go ahead and find a confidence interval. So let's obtain a 99% confidence interval for the true proportion of all churchgoers that are happy. So in my sample, we have 168 out of 391, but now we wanna estimate everyone. So we need to find N, which was 391. P hat will be the happy, the 168, out of everyone, which is 391. I think if I divide, I get 0. 0.4297. And then Q hat is just one minus this. So I always find these before I even start plugging into the formula, which is 0. 0.5703. All right, and then before we can use the formula, we're gonna go ahead and find the z-score. So we're gonna put the confidence level in the middle and find the two z-scores that trap an area of the confidence level in the middle. And then we can go ahead and plug into the formula. So 99% means we put 99% in the middle. A little messy of a normal curve, but that's okay. Which means we have 1% left over. So that means actually each side gets 0 0.005, because that would be 0.5%. So you can use inverse norm. I prefer, again, the table, I've already said this. So I'm gonna go to the 005, so not 05, we're gonna go to 005, and the z-score is 2.576. So this table has all the common percents. If it's not on the table, then you do have to use inverse norm. So 2.576. So negative on the left, positive on the right. And then if you do prefer the calculator, just use inverse norm of the tail, 0, 0, 005, and just use symmetry to find the other number. So inverse norm will give you the negative one, but again, because of the plus or minus, p hat plus or minus, that's taking care of the plus or minus. So plus or minus z star, square root p hat, q hat over n. So we've done a couple of these. If you're feeling a little confident, um, you could pause the video and see if you could plug these in on your own. Otherwise, let's go ahead and plug in. So 0.4297 plus or minus my z score, 2.576 square root of 0.4297 times 0 0.5703, all over the total of 391. So 
let's go ahead and use the calculator. So 0.4297, and then I like to do the plus or minus piece. Um, I always do this separately because that plus or minus piece will have meaning pretty soon. So 2.576 square root 0.4297 times 0 0.5703 divided by 391. And I get a plus or minus piece of 0 0.6645. Make sure you follow traditional rounding rules. And so P will be in this interval. Um, lower number always comes first, so the smaller number comes first. So 4297 minus 0645 gives us 0 0.3652. And then my upper will just change to addition, and we get 4942. So we're confident that the percent of happy ch churchgoers is somewhere in between these numbers. We don't know the exact number. That's the whole point of statistics. So let's see. Based on this interval, can we be 99% confident that the true proportion of churchgoers that are happy is higher than the 34% for Americans? So basically, are church, do churchgoers appear to be happier than Americans in general? Let's look at a number line. So a confidence interval is the reasonable possibilities. So we think we're anywhere from 36.52% up to 49.42%. And basically the interval is saying anything in this interval seems possible. So Americans overall are only 34%. So visually, does it look like churchgoers are happier? Yeah, because the entire interval is bigger than 34%. So yes, my really short explanation will be because 0.3652 comma 0.4942 is greater than 0.34, right? The entire interval is bigger than 34%. That's just my shorthand math notation. Um, I like the number line if you're visual. Um, what if instead the article stated that 40% of Americans are happy? So I'm going to draw my confidence interval again. 36.52% up to 49.42%. And anything in that interval seems reasonable. Based on this interval, can we be 99% confident that the true proportion of churchgoers are now happier than the 40% of Americans? So this is different. Where does 40% land? somewhere in the middle. So it's possible they're happier if the number ends up landing on the right side, but there's this whole area on the left where maybe they're not happier. So we can't be confident because 40 is in the middle of the interval. And so what I usually do is come up with a counter example. So it's possible that only uh, maybe 37 or 38% are happy that only 37% of churchgoers are happy. Which is in the interval, but less than 40. This is called a counter example. We're disproving it with an example. Um, you could have said 38%, you could have said 39. Um, you can't say 41, because 41 is happier. So there are some numbers that are happier. We just don't know. So we're not saying they're not happier, we're just saying we don't know. And that's because, again, a confidence interval is a list of the reasonable possibilities for the proportion. So anything in the interval is reasonable. So 41 could happen, but 39 could also happen. So we just don't know. They might be happier, they might not. The confidence interval alone doesn't prove that. So a couple more parts. Part E. Is it likely that the point estimate... That was p hat, which was 4297. Yeah, p hat. And this problem is exactly correct. So does it mean we're exactly 42.97% of churchgoers are happy? Probably not exact. Right? 
We've been talking about this, but probably close. And so let's finally answer that question of how close. So how close do we think p hat is to p? So our confidence interval, I'm just going to copy it down. It was 0.4297 plus or minus 0 0.0645, just from the previous page. And this actually tells us how close. So margin of error, this is a very important word in statistics, is the value we add and subtract from the point estimate, the 0 0.0645. We call this the margin of error. So we know that p hat does not equal p, so we have to give ourselves some margin of error. The margin of error is given by the formula below. And this is the plus or minus piece of the formula. And this is telling us how close. So how close do we think we are? We think we're within 0 0.0645. So you really don't need the formula for margin of error because you're almost always creating a confidence interval anyway. So it's just the plus or minus piece of the confidence interval. So no need to actually calculate this, right? We already calculated it. But we have finally answered that question of how close we think we are to the true value.